We've got a couple of minutes. Yeah. What do we need to do there? Well, Chris is just wrapping up here with the ABC crew. Yep. Um, if you can, I know you've got books to sign and people to greet. Uh, but this would be terrific if you. Yeah. 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 yeah no, for sure. Then they're going to ask questions about the work. Or What's that? What, what a Presumably that way. Presumably. <laughs> po po possibly. See if I answer. There's a lot of people are interested in, the, in your history with the Interval P as well and the connection and so forth, but it looks like we they're put together. Yeah. yeah. So. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, I almost put that in the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get it on the right height. It's perfect shape. It's a, it's called 160 gram, and it's a whammo shape. So you use this for ultimate frisbee. That's the one I used to play with. Not as fancy as colours, but um, um, there's uh, you. Four different throws, maybe five, six, I can show you. It's the backhand grip. This is the thumb grip, overhand grip. This is the forehand grip. You hold it like that. It's my favorite. Um, the advantage is you can see where you're throwing because you're standing with your, your body towards your targets. You see everything and can be more precise, I think. This is Books and Arts Daily on RN. Daniel Browning with you. My next guest is an award-winning photographer whose amazing exhibition of striking portraits is touring the country, hanging in some of the nation's finest galleries. His name is Ingvar Kenner, and he was born in Sweden but now lives between Sydney and New York, and his work has won him a number of awards, including the 2009 National Photographic Portrait Prize. His new exhibition is called Citizen, and it's a collection of portraits taken between 1997 and 2001. There's a factory worker, a prostitute, a nun, and even Ingvar's wife. Ingvar Kenne joins me now in the studio. Welcome to Books and Arts Daily. Hi, Daniel. Thank you. Now, there's a little bit of a discipline to the way you work because you don't, you don't employ um, um, artificial light very much in your work. Is that, is, that, is that the case? Always work with what's available, and, you know, I, I have a little fill flash which... Uh, most cameras come with these days and, and sometimes uh, right in front of, you know, above the lens. You just help it along sometimes when need be. But I like to work with what's available rather than override it and become studio-like. Citizen was never meant to be together as a project at all because um, I never chased down a, a photograph uh, or one of the cities as in I need to take a photograph of someone. It's something that you, over 15 years, you come across a lot of people and that's, um, but it's in many ways been undirectional, I guess.
Personally, I, I like, I, I'm interested in people, but in the process of being a photographer, for me, the most important thing is the photograph. And the thing with Citizen is that I, because I ask people to meet my camera in the same fashion, uh, time and time again, even though the location is different, but the, the, the approach to camera, it's almost like a passport photography scenario where they essentially look back at you. It's, it's nothing ingenious about it. It's gone on for all centuries, you know, but it, it's, I think because they're presented in a very similar fashion, uh, the chances of seeing the differences are, are greater as well. Ingvar's work is very, very striking and, and, and it has stood out particularly in our National Photographic Portrait Prize exhibitions, which started in 2007. And Ingvar's work uh, has been selected for uh, several of those exhibitions. And in 2009, uh, his portrait of his two sons was the winning portrait. And that has a quietness about it. Like many of uh, Ingvar's photographs, there's uh, a very interesting relationship between the subjects and the environment that they're uh, placed within there's a, a psychological uh, intensity in, the, in that relationship. I think it's one of the, it's strange that it got such a, that it went so well in that competition because it's probably the only time I've ever gone back to something I've seen and recreated a portrait. Because um, I was here the week before I actually took the photograph I came up over there, over the steps, and started going towards them, and they were playing, they were, they were standing, as you see it in the photograph, but a week earlier, playing with foam on their face. And so I said, no, we can stop, remember what you're doing now, next week we come back to the camera. And um, we did. The sliding scale, isn't it? But I started as a 13-year-old or so, um, taking photographs of birds that flies, those ones. And um, I remember borrowing the camera that we had in the house, which was an Instamatic. Back wasn't very impressive because there was little dots of black in the sky. Eventually, I got a SLR camera given to me on the birthday, and I got this 400mm lens, and I went out taking photographs of birds. So sort of, and then developed that film in a dark room in the sauna, back home. I think I like uh, to challenge myself. And I remember, you know, I climbed a peak that was over 6,000 meters. And if you're a mountain climber, that's, that's just a walk in the park. But for me, it was one of the biggest things I've ever done because I didn't know what I was doing. And I was on by myself. It's 
scrambling up this thing without rope because I didn't know have ropes and it didn't really need ropes. But it was pretty high and steep. But I think that's the thing with martial arts as well that I'll never be extremely good. It's just something that I enjoy seeing how far I can go with it. And I think the same with photography. I enjoy how far can you go with Citizen. I can go for another 30 years, I think. And I don't think I'll be tired of it. Meat, premium, you know, not, not too much fatty stuff. Yellow onion, finely chopped. Egg, one or two, depending, you know, a kilo but an egg. Lots of black pepper, quite a few pinches of salt. Breadcrumbs, you know. And then you cook it quite well, you know, for a long time. And then you put water in it, like a glass of water, or, or you know, fill it up with water and let it kind of reduce, and soy sauce. And then just before you kill it off, you pour a bit of milk into it, nice sauce. And then you serve it with mashed potato, that lingonberry jam, which you can buy at IKEA. Great stuff.